What's up, fam? You know, the day before Jordan Neely was killed on a subway train in New York, I was outside of a Target in D.C., and there was um, somebody who I assume was homeless who was in the in front of Target asking that somebody would kill him and saying that he was tired and just couldn't take it anymore. Like, the, literally the day before. And just said didn't care about anything. And, you know, it's not a situation where, you know, food to help in that situation, maybe some money. The man was just tired and clearly something was going on. And the next day I get the story of Jordan Neely, who basically was killed under similar circumstances. When I say similar circumstances, you know, somebody who had basically given up on life uh, and was very hurt in that moment and needed help. And in Jordan's cases from witnesses, you know, asked for help and, and, and he's gone, taken by, you know, not just uh, Daniel Penny, but two other individuals who also need to face charges. And we have to make sure that as a society, we're not digging into this idea that vigilante justice is, is acceptable, particularly when it relates to populations that we feel are lesser than us. Jordan was a, a human being who was let down by society and people are calling Penny a good Samaritan. But from everything we've heard from investigations and the like, Neely wasn't, you know, attacking anybody. We've all been in situations where we see people get loud on, on a subway. But what's wor the thing that's worse after, you know, the killing is the worst part. But the second worst part is just the way that this has become another chapter in the culture wars. And people are quick to jump jump on situations that they know nothing about because it fits a particular narrative. If if Daniel Penny was was black and not, I don't think we'd be getting the same type of support. Well, I would say black and a family that didn't have connections or supporters of Trump or DeSantis or whatever it is their parents support. I don't think we'd be getting the same type of story. I think this actually might be another case of people trying to go at Eric Mayor Eric Adams and using another example of like Chicago and talking about, quote unquote, black on black crime. Like I said, something that doesn't exist because, you know, people never talk about white on white crime or Hispanic on Hispanic crime. You know, it's a particular reason why that terminology is used. Of course, black people kill black people, but there's a particular reason that term is used and it's to further dehumanize us and justify the need for more police presence. Speaking of the fact that uh, Neely was being choked for 15 minutes and no police showed up. So where, where's that? But my point is that when we look at these situations where Devon DeSantis and other people are calling him the, the subway Superman and all of these things and already raised over $2 million while Jordan Neely's family, the last time I checked, was only at about 120000 for the funeral. Now, Penny's team said that they're not going to use the money that's raised. So where is it going to go? Somebody's political campaign? Is it, well, what, What's going on there? Where are we in society going to put ourselves in positions where we can condemn acts that are inhumane just because they are inhumane? When are we going to get to a point where we don't have to wait to find out the race of the person or the gender of the person or the religion of the person or the class of the person before we just say something is barbaric or inhumane or something that's terroristic? That's where we are in society today. And when I saw about Jordan Neely being killed and when I learned that they were not going to first release the identity of, of Daniel Penny, I... I I immediately saw the setup because what happened, what we knew was going to happen, that that media airways were going to use this time to criminalize and start to create a case against Jordan Neely, while Daniel Penny had an opportunity to do whatever he wanted to do it. Everybody just wanted to tell the story of the former Marine. I don't know if he's former Marine or ex-Marine, which is two different types of Marines. They just wanted to have the story narrative of Marine, 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 Marine. They already put us in the mindset of, well, this guy is a Marine. He could be helping. He was just trying to help people. But we don't know anything about him. We don't know. We know that some in his family, there are conservatives and they're either Trump or DeSantis supporters. But, you know, we don't know if he is, you know, fair enough. But we don't know. He could have had, you know, racist social media posts that he had opportunities to take down while nobody knew who he was, opportunities to clean up his whole background in ways that could help him in his, his defense, which isn't fair. 
right? Which isn't fair to the memory of Jordan Neely, which isn't fair to the way we criminalize Jordan Neely. And then people quick to jump to mental health. And once again, in a situation where the same people who are talking about some mental health problem are doing nothing to increase mental health access to people um, across society. We see with people like Governor Abbott in Texas, who wants to pardon Daniel Perry for killing a Black Lives Matter supporter. We're in Texas. You have an Abbott who as we're coming up on the commemoration one year of Uvalde, cut over $210 million from the budget for access to mental health. And Texas has is last as it relates to mental health access. And so we see across the country that people don't really care about mental health, but they say it enough that even people who are considered to be quote unquote left are jumping into these mental health conversations almost instantly and, and, and almost stopping the conversation about issues relating to gun violence, as was the case with Perry in Texas. But bringing it back to Jordan Neely, as he's laid to rest, we have to be mindful of the fact that the Good Samaritan story, <clears throat> Samaritan didn't kill anybody, right? And really, at the end of the day, we can't just have this mentality of who's valued at what because of their race or their gender, like I said earlier. So I really hope, as Reverend Al Sharpton said at the funeral, that his death won't be in vain or his killing won't be in vain, but it just should have never been. And and the way in which we throw away lives based on whether they fit our politics or fit our economic status is something that needs to change. And I'm hoping that all of us will do our best to be upstanders and not bystanders and, and say, you know, yeah, I didn't agree with this, this person or that person, but they deserve to live. They deserve to be here. They deserve the chance at redemption, particularly when a city and, and a mental health system fails them multiple times over. So rest in peace, Jordan. We deserve to be here. And people are going to continue to fight to get justice for you and to get justice and services for people who deserve them so the society can stop throwing away its people. Rest in peace. Rest in power. You deserve better. We let you down. We're going to try to do better going forward. Peace.